Okay, welcome back. And if you are following on from the last video of epic worked examples in terms of stoichiometry, congratulations for sticking with it. That was a pretty big one. Remember, you only have to watch the ones that help you get through the types of calculations you're getting stuck on. So let's get started with looking at applying some of those stoichiometric calculations to thermochemical equations and then using stoichiometry to work out how much energy will be produced from a combustion reaction. So this is now starting to put together all the maths that we've started to look at in area of study one so far for us to be able to combine those enthalpy of combustion values that we get, thermochemical equations and stoichiometry, bringing it all together for a lot of fun if you like maths. Okay, let's have a look at these. So with this, what we're doing is we're going to have a thermochemical equation because combustion of fuels provides energy. And then how much energy is given by our delta H of combustion or molar heat of combustion, remembering that these values, like so much in year 12, are given in the data booklet. Okay. You do have to remember to check if you've been given like an energy content value, so energy per gram or a energy of combustion, heat of combustion, which is going to be per mole. So don't forget to check those units and what the question is asking you for. In this example, we're going to be calculating energy released from the combustion of a fuel. And we're going to be looking at a full, fully complete com uh, combustion equation. And we've been given our delta H value along with it. So it's a thermochemical equation. So we've been asked to calculate the heat energy released in megajoules when 10 kilograms of octane undergoes complete combustion. So we're going to be dealing with a very big number here, okay, remembering that our delta H is in kilojoules, so there is going to be a conversion required here. 10 kilograms of octane means that we are going to have to convert to grams at some point as well. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to know, octane is our fuel that is being burnt. We need to know how much 10 kilograms of octane is going to be in mole. So we're going to calculate the number of mole of octane. So it's 10 kilos. So we're going to multiply that by 1,000. So we get 10,000 grams divided by 114.0, which is our molar mass obtained by doing 8 times 12 plus 18 times 1 and adding those together for our molar mass of octane based on the formula. That tells us we've got 87.7 mole. Now we need, of course, to work out our mole ratio. And in this case, it's the mole ratio of the coefficient of the fuel to the energy produced, because we can see here that two mole of the fuel is producing 10,900 kilojoules of energy. I don't have to worry about the negative sign in this case, because I'm just calculating energy. And this has told me that this is being the output of energy is the negative sign. So I'm going to ignore that negative because I'm talking about the total amount of energy. So this means that I'm going to have 10,900 divided by 2 is going to be the number of en the energy per mole. Okay, so we can do this by proportion in we can set up the 87.7 moles divided by 2 is going to equal x on 10,900. If you're not comfortable doing this setup, I often do it this way. I just tend to work out how much I'm going to have for one mole. So 10,900 divided by 2, this 2 coming from the coefficient of the fuel, okay, which is 2 up here in our balanced chemical equation which means I'm going to get 5,450 kilojoules per mole. And that's actually for every one mole. Okay, so the total energy now is going to be equal to the number of mole multiplied by 5,450. And the number of mole that we had was 87.7. So that gives me 477965, uh, which is exactly the same as what we got here. So we're at the same point here. 
megajoules is a 10 to the 3 bigger than kilojoules. Okay, so kilojoules are here. To get to megajoules, I'm going to divide by a thousand. So I'm just going to go one, two, three. I need three sig figs. So I'm going to round this nine, makes that go to four, seven, eight megajoules. Okay, so you can set up the proportion. And that proportion is set up by I have propane is to delta H, and that's two is to. 10,900 and then I've got 87.7 .7 is to x. So in this case I'm going to get 2x is going to be equal to um, this. I'm going to cross multiply. I get 87.7 .7 multiplied by 10,900 divided by 2 which is where we get exactly the same value before. Remember, there's multiple ways to do this mathematics. Use the way that works for you. Okay, your turn to try. This is exactly the same process. This time we are using ethane, and you've been given the balanced chemical equation and the kilojoules per mole for ethane. So you just need to work out your molar ratios and your number of mole of ethane from there pause and come back and check your answer. Okay, so hopefully you figured out that your answer must be in megajoules. We've got 10 kilos again. So when we work out the number of mole of ethane by taking mass divided by molar mass, we get 333 mole. Again, we have a coefficient of two in front of it, our fuel. So we need to divide the delta H by that coefficient and gives us 1560 kilojoules per mole. So now we're up to calculating the energy. We're going to take 333.33, multiply that by 1560, and we will get a grand total of 519994.8 kilojoules. We've been asked to give this in megajoules, so we want 520 megajoules as our rounded answer. Hopefully that's what you got. Now, this is the other way. So we looked at how much energy would be produced from burning a fuel. Now we need to work out how much energy, how much fuel would be required to get a particular amount of energy. Again, we're looking at the combustion of methane. This time the question says, what volume of methane? Remembering that methane is going to be a gas, so we're going to be using our gas equations here. Okay, so gas measured at SLC, so VM will come into play, burns completely to provide 4 times 10 to the 4 kilojoules. We don't have to do anything. This is in the correct unit that we need to use. And we've been given this equation here. We can see that the coefficient of 1 is in front of our CH4, so I don't have to do anything to my delta H. Okay, so I'm going to be using the idea that E is equal to N times delta H. Okay, so I can substitute in the amount of energy that I want to find, which is 4.00 times 10 to the 4 kilojoules is equal to N times 890 kilojoules per mole. So what you can see here, we're going to solve for N. N is going to equal E on delta H which is going to be 4 times 10 to the 4 divided by 890, which is going to be 44.9 mole, as we see here. Now we can just substitute that in into N is equal to V on Vm, rearranging for V. So V is going to be equal to N times Vm. Vm from our data booklet is 24.8, giving us 1,115 litres. And then again, sticking to our three significant figures that has been consistent through all these examples and changing that to 1.12 times 10 to the 3 litres. Your turn. Okay, have a go and come back and check your answer. Welcome back. Hopefully this one seems straightforward. We have a 1 is to 1 coefficient between 
our fuel and the delta H value. So we don't need to divide by two or do anything funny there. We've been given the amount of energy and we want to find the volume of methane that would be required to do that. So we're going to work out the number of moles that would be required by taking energy and dividing by delta H. That gives us 5.618 mole of methane. Then we're going to find the volume by taking that 5.618 and multiplying by 24.8 and remembering to check our significant figures and give our answer to the correct significant figures. You should be able to do all of the chapter three review questions now in terms of stoichiometry calculations. Hopefully it's starting to make a little bit of sense. If you're having any problems with your stoichiometry calculations and finding the mole ratios, I encourage you to check out one of the previous videos on limiting in excess and your basic mole calculations and stoichiometry, or come and see me in class um, if you're still having a struggle with those. I hope to see you soon and that's it for now.